Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Raka Kudash, Barakatham. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutations to Yahakim out there pushing this word in truth and sincerity. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video, and I'm going to start off with Psalms chapter 58, verse 3. The wicked, which we know were uh, the Edomites, are so called white people, as pursuant to Malachi chapter 1, verse 4, their Esau is the border of wickedness, are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. And with this video, I'm going to be showing how uh, the Edomites were born to not have that upright spirit to be the sons of the wicked as it says being estranged from the womb and going astray as soon as they be born speaking lies because that's what Esau's whole uh, society is built off of deception and making uh, treaties with people just to screw them over later which uh, you can clearly see with what happened to the Native Americans the so-called Native Americans which are the of the northern tribes of Gad and besides that you can see the fruits of Esau's labor ever since he got into that power seat as we'll read in Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 10 verse 2 as the judge of the people is himself so are his officers and what manner of man the ruler of the city is such are all they that dwell therein and since Esau is the basest of men that wicked estranged from the womb going astray speaking lies just look at how the people are in the society today just look at in America everybody lies when they don't need to lie everybody's always trying to get one over on the other person and put up this false image showing that they're better than other people which is what Esau is all about but I digress but now I'm gonna get into my uh, first article just to let uh, the truth speak for itself and it's on ZeroHedge.com, and the title reads, Iran's leadership must decide if they want their people to eat, says Mike Pompeo, the U.S. Secretary of State. Less than a week after U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo told Fox News Sunday that the Iranians are responsible for the starvation of Yemeni civilians, even though the U.S. is a... Uh, given logistical support to the Saudi Arabians who are fighting in that Yemeni civil war, he's again issued hugely provocative words telling the BBC during an interview that Iranian leadership has to make a decision that they want their people to eat in reference to the latest round of US sanctions which are uh, preventing the people from eating just because the Iranians don't want to bend over backwards to US hegemony or Edomite hegemony. As the interview was with BBC Persian, Pompeo's words were immediately translated from English and broadcast to the Iranian public through the BBC's Persian language publication. Pompeo repeated his theme that Iran is the world's foremost state sponsor of terror and a destabilizing influence. Again, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies in the Middle East while ultimately blaming the country's economic suffering on the intransigence of the country's leaders and anybody out there who knows anything about anything knows that the United States of America also known as Babylon the Great is the world's largest uh, state sponsor of terror and that destabilizing influence because uh, back during that Soviet Afghanistan war in the 80s it was the US that funded the Taliban as well as uh, brought Osama bin Laden to uh, preeminence by funding him which led to the creation of Al Qaeda and just look at uh, Latin America during the 20th century the US uh, funded military coups to overthrow uh, leaders who were sympathetic to their own people to put in uh, puppets who were sympathetic to US interests and um, again with uh, Gad or the so-called Native Americans they terrorize the people on this uh, landmass to steal their land and uh, with that Soviet Afghanistan war the U this uh, Esau was such a deceptive devil that he gave school books to the children to get them in that war warlike mindset because there were some mathematic books that taught people how to how taught children how to use addition and subtraction by showing uh, three knives for the letter three and two hand grenades for the letter two so when children would add three knives and two hand grenades they got the the number five just complete madness and also the US 
and the state of Israel, which are also Edomites, were behind the creation of uh, ISIS to try to overthrow Assad's government in that Syrian civil war, as we'll see real quick in this other article on mintpressnews.com titled, UN Report Finds ISIS Given Breathing Space in U.S. Occup Occupied Areas of Syria by Maintaining an ISIS Pocket in the Territory It Occupies, the U.S., the biggest sponsor of uh, state terrorism, can continue to justify its illegal presence in the country for the long term, ultimately substituting Iran for ISIS as its new regional boogeyman. And you got to remember... Iran was invited into Syria to help with that Syrian civil war. The U.S. wasn't. The U.S. has uh, troops in that country Ill illegally occupying territory in it. New York. A recent report from the U.N. Security Council's sanctions monitoring team has found that many of the places in Syria where the terror group Daesh or ISIS continued to operate, recuperate, and extract oil for profit are in areas of the country occupied by the United States. According to the report's executive summary, Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant have been defeated militarily in Iraq and most of the Syrian Arab Republic during 2017, rallied in early 2018, owning to a loss of momentum by forcing fighting in the east of the Syrian Arab Republic which prolonged access by ISIL to resources and gave it breathing space to prepare for the next phase of its evolution into a global covert network. While the text itself doesn't explicitly state who controls these areas of Syrian territory, maps of eastern Syria make it clear that the pockets of Daesh within U.S. controlled territory have remained unchanged in size since November 2017. While the Daesh pockets in the Syrian government-controlled portion of eastern Syria have shrunk considerably since last November. We got the U.S. territory in yellow here. And we got that uh, ISIS territory right, right in it. Which you think a big control of this could easily uh, push this out of the way and just uh, airstrike the remaining pockets of ISIS out of existence. But that's uh, against the U.S.'s agenda of staying in Syria and using that as a staging ground to eventually go against Iran. Furthermore, the UN reports states that the area where Daesh has rallied since the year began are located in pockets of territory in the Syrian Arab Republic on the Iraqi border where the group has mounted attacks, including across the border into Iraq. Again, area maps clearly show that Daesh controlled areas in only the Slocky, that the Daesh controlled areas and only the US occupied portion of eastern Syria are along the Syria Iraqi border. Notably, in the sliver of Daesh controlled land between US and Syrian government controlled areas in the border city of Abu Kamal, when the Syrian Arab army has tried to attack Daesh positions in the area this year, they have been targeted by US coalition airstrikes so they can cre uh, protect their mercenary terror force. U.S. coalition airstrikes have also attacked Syrian civilian villages in the government-controlled portion of Abu Kamal. Survivors of that attack claimed that their villages had been targeted for refusing the entry of U.S.-backed opposition militias, such as ISIS or any uh, other Al-Qaeda offshoot, such as the Qassad militia, which is largely composed of former Daesh fighters. So, uh, as you can see, that wicked are again estranged from the womb going forth speaking lies because the U.S. claimed Iran was the biggest sponsor of state terrorism. But uh, as we just read there, it's the U.S. that's protecting the, what's the remnants of ISIS in Syria so they can keep that war going to fulfill their interests. Being that devil with the forked tongue... Pompeo's words came on the heels of Iran's foreign minister, ministry issuing a formal response to this week's U.S. sanctions snapback on the energy sector, publishing a three-minute video by FM Gerard Zarif on Tuesday, wherein Zarif emphasized that the sanctions mainly targeted average Iranian citizens, referencing the economic terrorist warfare that directly targets the Iranian people, 
the U.S. attacks the civilians of a country it's against to get what it wants, to foment chaos, and then they use deception to make it look like the governments are the one behind the people suffering so they can uh, foment a civil war, that divide and conquer tactic that the Edomites have been used never, even back to the times when they were the Romans. The most contentious segment of the BBC interview was as follows. Question. You say you are not punishing the people. You say that the sanctions are not targeting the people. But what if? Pompeo says, no, they're not. Question. But what if the sanctions hurt the Iranian people, the ordinary lives of them? Pompeo, the folks who are hurting the Iranian people are the Ayatollah and Qassam Soleimani and the Iranian leadership. That's who is bringing the difficulties to Iran today. And you see this. You see this when you read of the protests. You see this when the Iranian people have a chance to speak. Although we know the human rights there don't permit the Iranian people to uh, speak freely. It's the regime that is inflicting harm on the Iranian people, not the world and not the United States. Question. But as you... But you say that this is not a democratic regime. You say that the regime doesn't care for the Iranian people. But you say you do care for Iranian people. Secretary Pompeo, we do. Salak. Always get problems with Zero Hedge. It always freezes up. But with hundreds of thousands of common Iranians reportedly now struggling to find life-saving medicine due to the sanctions, we doubt the Iranian public is going to be convinced of Washington's care and concern for common Iranians.